All right, everyone. In this video, let's inspect the build output from server-side rendering. Before we build our app, I'm going to add a log statement in index.js as well as category.js. So pre-rendering, news article list, and pre-rendering, news articles for category, followed by the route parameter. Let me also delete the .next folder. Now in the terminal, run the command yarn build. This takes a couple of seconds to generate the build folder. Now for the first part, let's make sense of this build output. Like before, we have a list of all the individual pages generated. Our focus though, is on this news route. Both slash news and slash news slash category have a lambda symbol beside them. And if you take a look at the legend, lambda stands for server side rendering. The next point to keep in mind is that server side rendered pages are not statically generated at build time. So if we inspect server pages, news, we don't see the HTML pages. So the behavior is as expected. For the final part, let's start the app. In the terminal, run yarn start. If we now navigate to slash news, the page is pre-rendered and you can see the log statement in the terminal. Navigate to slash news slash sports and the page is pre-rendered again at request time and the log statement is also present in the terminal. Pre-rendering for category sports. But for both these pages, even after the request is made, the HTML is not generated in the server folder. Since new pages are built at request time, there is no need to generate a page into the build folder. And if we were to change article one description in db.json to new description one, refresh, you can see that it is reflected in the very next request for that page. Now what we have just seen might seem trivial after inspecting builds for static generation. But like I mentioned earlier, building our app and running the built app is as close as we can get to production deployment. So I wanted to make sure you understand how it works. With that, we have now covered both forms of pre-rendering in Next.js. The last topic to cover in this section is about client-side data fetching. Should you do it? Should you not do it? Let's learn more about that in the next video. Thank you all for watching. And if you're enjoying the content, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel.